Hello and welcome back, it's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth and today we're going to be playing See You Later I mean it's not really in the title, Alligator but it is in the rule set because what we're playing today, See You Later in a While is actually the full title from Michael Lefkowitz features both alligators and crocodiles and they both have different rules and for one reason or another I can't actually seem to distinguish them as I'm looking at them in the grid so of course in reference to I think that's probably what Michael is actually referencing. Kind of that kid's joke, see you later alligator. Uh, that's what you actually end up seeing. Sleuth is having what looks like, I'm going to guess it's like a river cruise, Nile cruise. Probably Nile given the scenery around, the sun setting, the kind of um, exploratory hat that the alligator has stolen from him. And despite taking it away, Sleuth is pretty happy about it and saying see you later alligator. Anyway, enough of this silliness, let's take a look at today's puzzle and rule sets. So we've got See You Later in a While by Michael Lefkowitz. And the following set of rules, you know, notice what I mean by I can't tell them apart, but I assure you, as you when you see these rules, one of them is going to be a crocodile, one of them is going to be an alligator. So normal six by six rules apply. That means place the digits one to six once each in every row, every column and every two by three box. Then we have killers. Values in a cage sum to the number in the corner. This is very difficult to demonstrate given the alligators and crocodiles are in here, but ignore them for a second. That would mean to get to... <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. It's just like I can't even demonstrate this, can I? Yeah, I can't get to any value in here. Uh, with any example. So if we just ignore the fact that this is 1 to 6, <laughs> that would mean that this is 5, 6, uh, sorry, excuse me, 6, 7, and 8 to add up to 21 in 3 cells. That's one example of filling it. Notice only one, of, only two of these, sorry, only one of these digits is even allowed in here. But as long as you get to that value of 21 in these 6 cells, you are good to go. <clears throat> excuse me. Right, here's where it's all going to make sense in a second. The value of a digit on an alligator is negated. So, for example, if I put a 3 on here, that's now negative 3. And then to get to a killer sum of 1, I would put a 4 in here. So 4 plus minus 3, or essentially taking away 3, you will get to 1, which is the given total for that cage. Another example is crocodoublers. The value of a digit on a crocodile is doubled. So let's try this as an example. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of partially solving this, but let, let me give you this one. So if I put a, a 2 on a negator, I'm just going to color them as red, and I put a 1 on a crocodubler, this will give me a sum of 0. Negative 2 plus 1 times 2 is indeed 0. So I know for some of you guys that this is a bit of a struggle. Negative um, values are equally difficult to you as it is to me. But I hope you're going to give this a go. Um, it is meant to be a one-star difficulty rated puzzle. And I can already see a few places where it's very constrained and it's probably going to make the breaking a bit easier. Right, uh, if you fancy joining Sleuth on a river cruise and seeing some alligators and solving this puzzle, link will be in the description down below for you to do so. And with that said, I'm going to restart the clock and see how I get on. Right, so the 21 clue that I was struggling to add up to, this is definitely the place to start. And I'm thinking, is this maximum? So if I put a 6 in here, you double it, that's 12. I still need 9 to get to 21. So that is, that's the first digit, that's 6. And this is 4 and 5. Excellent. Now the triangular number for 21, sorry, the triangular number for 6 is indeed 21. So really, if I just place the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in here, I'll be fine. But these two are kind of throwing things out. I'm just going to keep reminding myself to 
blew up crocodublers and red up negators. Uh, that will definitely be a negator. This is definitely a doubler to get to 21 in four cells, because even four, five, three, four, five, six will not get me to 21. So this is clearly a doubler as well. Now, there isn't a constraint about how many doublers and negators you have in a column. I mean, clearly, for example, there's a doubler in here. Otherwise, we're not going to get to zero. So this particular one. So let me just think about the combos of zeros. Maybe that's the next place to start. <clears throat> Excuse me. So to get to zero, I used a neg. sorry, a... What did I do in my example? I used one and two, I'm pretty sure. No, but it's a doubler. A negative two and a, yeah, a double one. I'm kind of wondering. Yeah, so there always has to be, <clears throat> excuse me, a negative, sorry, a even digit on the negative because the doubler will even it up and then you want to essentially wipe them all out to get to zero. So given there is a six in here, the only evens I'm allowed are two and four. Now negative four would require a double two. So there is always a two in here. It's either one, two or two, four. Maybe helpful. Let's think about this one. I guess I can do three, six technically in here. And I may have to actually, because with the two gone, so notice it's either a one and a two, a two and a four, and then the last remaining option is three and six. Two is common to both of them, so no two in this one. So this has to be three, six. And therefore this one, it's almost like a black croc, you know, is from one, two, four with a definite two. Because if I put three and six in here, it will break this cell. So the two means that's not a two, that is the two, and therefore that's the negative one. And that's the, not that it matters by the way, and this is the doubler. And because that's the, no, hang on, I don't know that for sure, excuse me. Because that could be the doubler and this could be negative four, so I don't actually know that. Interesting. These are from one, two, three, that's not a two. This is not a three. There's essentially another one, two, and a four, five in here. Okay, so we thought a bit about the zeros. Let's think about the ones. And there is a doubler, which would always turn it into an even number. And then I need it to be an odd number to get to an odd number. So let's think about an example, if that's even possible. So if I put a one and I double the one, there's no way I can actually, okay, so one on the doubler doesn't work. Two on the doubler will get me to four, and then I need a three, right? Three on the doubler will get me to six, and then I would need a five, and then anything beyond that, I'm pretty sure is too big. Four doubled is eight. I'm not gonna get seven in here. So this time round, it's two, three, five with a definite three. And I'm guessing it's the same for this one to get to one with a definite three. And I did say the doubler is definitely at the bottom, didn't I? Sorry, the neg negator. Why did I say that? Oh yeah, of course, because that's the only one that's available. Right, and this is a bit more obvious. It's actually not the same as this one because I don't have one of each. So this is just nonsense. If I have negative one, this would have to be two, which it isn't. So it's not two and it's not one. If this is negative two, this would have to be three, which is possible. So I think essentially there's a difference of one between these. It's almost like a white crop could opt. Four, five, six, three, four, five. No three in here. So no four in there because there has to be a difference of one. Okay. I mean, I've been avoiding this 21 cage and I really should try and actually figure out what's going on in here. 
So there's no doubt that there has to be a negative because essentially, as it is, adding one, two, three, four, five, six will get me to 21. If there isn't a negative in here and they're both doublers, I will exceed 21. So there has to be one negative, at least. And let's keep this going. So what do we want between these two? So let's say that there is like one and six on here. The overall value needs to be seven. So we want the doubler minus the negative constraint to equal the sum of both digits. Okay. Let's, let's think about it this way. This is one, two, or three. That is not a three. This is one or two. And this is four, five, six. So chances are this is the negative, and then we're doubling up something. Chances are. And I'm just going to explore that a bit. Negative one. No, that doesn't sound right, does it? Yeah. Okay, let's try the let's let's prove that it has to be the negative constraint because if I if I make this a doubler and I make this the negative one, even if I double the two and take so take the maximum in here, take the minimum in here, minus four and a double two, they will be wiped up to a zero value and they need to be going to at least six. So that's definitely the negative. This is definitely the doubler. Yeah, and the max minimum in here now and the maximum in there is the only thing that works. <clears throat> Essentially, double four is eight. And then the negative two will get me back down to six, which is what I'm after. And if I try, eight, try anything bigger in here, it will exceed 21. And if I try anything smaller in there, it will be way above 21. Yeah, so minus one in here and eight in there would give me seven. I would actually get to 22. Right, now I'm convinced that is four, that is two. These are not fours. And that two is actually gonna be helpful. That will make this three, five. That is not a two, so that is a two. That five gave me another six, and this is another one, four. Yeah, I'm good with that, and that's a five. No five in here. So the five there removed the six there. So that would have been a three and a two to get to Kind of a positive one that three gave me six and three and then i have one and four paired in row one that's not a five that's six that's five this is another one four and this is second then i thought i broke it five these two cells oh hang on that's not a two that's not a two or three that's one that's four these two cells are now known they're one and six and we're doing okay. Five here gave me four, which gives me one, four, one, four. And that four gives me five. This one is removed. Three and two are removed. That one gave me a three in here. Excellent. So yeah, we do need to solve this 21 cage as well to be able to complete the puzzle. So let's just pencil mark to see what are the possible combinations in here. So I have two, three, and six remaining. Clearly that's not a two. And these cells I have one, two, and four remaining. That's not a four, that's not a two. I mean, I've got a one, two pair now. That's the only place for a four, so I'll take it. And that's kind of my combo. Do I need to have a two in here? Yes, so I have to have a two based on the fact that twos are not allowed elsewhere in the box. I have to have a six, and it's a question whether it's in the... And can I solve any of them? Can I get... So I have to have three and six, and then it's whether it's... Sorry, I have to have two and six, and it's a question of whether it's one or two. Fair enough. Right, do I have to maximize this? So the 21, take away the four, we're left with 17. Pretty sure I have to, because if I double anything else, I'm not gonna get anywhere near 17. Even if you try the three, the second highest digit, that would be nine. And then even with six and two, that is 17, okay. So I can have a three in here. No, double three sleuth is not square three. 
is 6, and 6 is 12, and 2 is 14, it's nowhere near, it is definitely 6, and 3, and therefore this is 12, 15, and 19, I need a 2 to get to 21, and there we go. Interesting puzzle, very different, very different. Just going to try and remind my, so yeah, the 3 is the doubler, and then the 5 is the negative, not that I need it at this point, but it's helpful to actually solve the puzzle properly. And that's a one, and if I've not made any mistakes, that's a five for the finale. So, you know, an 11, 11 and a half minute solved means it is an approachable weekday puzzle, even though it's very different from other puzzles we've played again from the past. Kind of enjoying the recent series of largely different puzzles that we've been playing. So, fantastic to see how creative these constructors are. Hope that you guys enjoyed the puzzle and video. See you back for the next one. Bye-bye for now.